Hey guys, this is the video <clears throat> that goes along with the tutorial for the Q&A on glowing objects. And as you can see, I've already started the painting, um, all the non-glowing stuff. And I'm already kind of setting it up to have a color complement scheme. So the room is blue, which is a cool color. And I'm going to make the swords orange, which A, because orange is a warm color, but then B, because blue and orange are complements, it's also going to make the swords stand out in general, as well as make them feel hot. And also, even though I'm doing two swords, um, especially because they're so similar, I'm going to try to keep the, the blades on the, same, on the same layer so that when I'm putting effects on them and things like that, I can do both at the same time. So here you can see I've locked the layer and I'm using lighter values like a bright yellow. Everything's still pretty yellow at this point, but you'll see the orange come in later. Um, brighter yellow, closer to white to imply where the sword might be hotter. Because it's very rare that something glows totally, well, it's not totally rare, but when things glow evenly it tends to be less interesting and if you put a gradient in there it implies that the heat is changing throughout the object. Kind of like when you pull a sword out of a kiln. Which actually would not be bad reference to look at for this kind of stuff. Alright, so here you can see I've duplicated the layers and I'm using a darker value, which is orange, which is not as bright as yellow. but. Um, it has a lot more saturation to it and more color and again it is the color complement to the blue so take those that darker layer I'll put it below the light uh, yellow whitish layer and then apply the Gaussian blur to give it that orange glow and then kinda like fire because the center where it's at its hottest is the brightest and it tends to be more white and yellow um, having the darker values glowing around it makes it feel like the heat is going from very hot where you've got the white blade to a dissipating cooler orange. And also, I mean, experiment with the hue and saturation on this stuff. I mean, you could theoretically make a, a sword that looks hot out of just blue and green, but you have to experiment a little more to make sure that you get the values right. Because um, when you're using cool colors, it, you, you don't want to make it look like an ice sword. So here you can see I'm painting in a little bit of detail on the blades. And since they're hot, um, you don't want to use darker values anywhere on there. Everything should be really bright. Um, so any kind of texture work you want to put on the blade, I would suggest you do with white, essentially. White or a really bright yellow. And 
and here I'm starting to paint in the kind of the bounce line. Um, and you'll notice on the lower the lower sword, I haven't erased the bits of the stand yet to imply that that blade is in front of the back stand that the higher sword is on. But um, I'm still going to paint in. I'm still painting in the little bounce light there because that that eraser thing is one of the last things I'll do. As far as where you're choosing to put those the, that bounce light, just try to imagine how many of the the faces of the object, in which case the, the sword stand, how many of the faces of that object are facing the thing that's glowing. If it's facing it and it's close to it, it's probably picking up a bit of the light. If it's not facing it, don't put the light on it. 